Welcome back to the Slay Some, where I count up the victims of Jokers and others nightly escapades. In this episode, I take a look at the most divisive Arkham game, Batman Arkham Origins, released in 2013. Origins wasn't exactly praised when it first came out, but I've come to love it almost unconditionally. However, that love may be waning after today's video, where I'm going in woefully unprepared. Unlike Asylum, this game is very big with a massive open world, and unlike City, I have not completed this game at least 15 times in the span of less than 10 years. So, I don't know the layout of this game at all. I've completed it once, played New Game Plus once, and still have not played I Am The Night mode a single time. Yeah, I'm really winging this one and just hoping I can get everything. But I did it because I needed Origins footage for one amazing scene anyway, so may as well knock out two birds with one stone. Either way, let's get to the sleighs and you guys inevitably yelling at me for missing some. Our story begins with a scheduled execution. Julian Day, aka the Calendar Man, was scheduled for execution this Christmas Eve. But as anyone who's played Arkham City knows, this execution was ultimately not successful. Day was able to escape his execution because of a prison riot, started by the infamous crime boss, Black Mask. He's captured Commissioner Loeb, set Calendar Man free, and put the prison in chaos. Now it's up to Batman to stop the riot, save Loeb, and bring down Black Mask. But before he can do that, I need to get a tally outside the prison. And we start with eight bodies strewn about as a result of Killer Croc's rampage through the prison. Now it should be noted, I can't technically confirm any of these bodies because for some reason I can't activate detective mode yet. I guess they have it locked until the detective mode tutorial so I can't use it to confirm that these guys are actually dead. However, I can use another aspect these games use for corpse identification and that's movement. If a body were unconscious, they'd still have a tiny bit of movement to confirm they're still alive. But these guys don't have that so I can call them deceased. Now actually heading inside the prison, we have one more body right past the hole you can crouch through, two guys slammed into the walls, and four bodies just like kinda laying on the ground. Then we meet Warden Joseph, who immediately tries to kill us with a lead pipe, but we go on our merry way because we have a job to do. Like counting these two guys at the top of the stairs, followed by five guys in this hallway with the armored enemy. One of which was absolutely torn apart by Killer Croc. And then there's seven more slain in the cage with Vicky Vale. That's pretty messed up. And then we've got yet another guard killed by Croc as he slammed into the cement floor. But strangely, his body disappears by the time we reach the area, so I don't really know what happened there. Then there's one more body by the chapel, and then we find that Batman has failed his mission. Commissioner Loeb is thrown in the gas chamber and executed, Batman banging behind the glass with nothing he can do to stop it. Then this mobster is thrown into the glass to let Batman jump through it, but he's fine, so he doesn't go on the sum. And that's all for the Blackgate prologue, and we start our sum with 30 people already, dang. Batman returns to the Batcave with new information from Killer Croc, that eight assassins have been hired to kill him in sick competition for 50 million dollars. And during their introductions, we actually get some slaves to count. The first assassin is Deathstroke, who I don't think kills any of these guys because of his combat style, but... I like big numbers, and it would kinda contradict some slays later, so I'm gonna count him anyway. We only see him hit 6 guys down, but there's 7 guys clearly going up against him in this wider shot, so that's how many I'm gonna add. Firefly then very likely kills this guy falling out of a helicopter. Again, it's not confirmed, but I have little doubt Firefly finished him. Copperhead then very clearly kills this guy before reading her envelope. Deadshot then kills four guys with a single ricocheting bullet, while having to turn around no less, so great shot, Floyd. Electrocutioner then very likely kills the messenger in this shot. This one is even less confirmed than Fireflies, but I have a feeling he'd be reckless enough to have no cap on the number of volts he can shoot through people. So this guy is probably dead. Shiva is then surrounded by seven thugs and takes each of them down. While we only see two of her blows being fatal, I have a feeling she went ahead and killed all of them to send a message. We know she could do it. Bane then brutally kills these three guys. One with a slam into the ground and two with a single handed neck snap, god damn! That thankfully ends the cutscene, but while adding a clean 24 to our sum. It's kinda hard to tell the breakdown of all these guys, so I'm just kinda gonna have to guess. After discovering the plot for his head, Batman decides the best thing for him to do is go out into the city and find Black Mask. 
They'll put innocence in danger to attract my attention. I can't take that risk. Hear that, Sin Channels? It's the game itself explaining possible plot contrivances. Learn to listen! Anyway, he flies into Gotham to start following a trail for Black Mask, but in the process must start a radio tower that someone tampered with. As he makes his way up, he comes across a body blown clean through a wall by an explosion from an access panel. But in doing so, he gains access to the tower's security protocols and can reset everything while meeting Enigma. And this brings him to the incredibly contrived Arkham Origins overworld. Now, as far as I can tell, there aren't actually any bodies in the main overworld. Despite the Origins map being filled to the brim with back alleys and massive skyscrapers, there isn't a single body in any of them, at least as far as I could see. I did my best to scour these alleyways in detective mode for even a single body, and never saw one. And I assume that's because of the setting relative to Arkham City. Most of the overworld bodies in Arkham City were relegated to side missions dedicated to killers or Riddler stuff. And since there are no psychopath murderers like Hush and Zaz in Origins, they didn't leave any bodies behind. And since Riddler is just starting out as Enigma, he doesn't bother with deadly puzzles or hostages. So I'm pretty much free to go with just the story. And go forward, I shall. Again, if I was wrong and I did miss one, feel free to yell at me in the comments. Frankly, I'm not a masochist, and I don't want to keep gliding through this city for 10 hours. So we head to Jezebel Plaza to confront some of Penguin's men during a weapons deal. And in doing so, we meet one of the best characters in the game, Ricky Loose Lips LeBlanc. Batman almost kills him three times in a single minute. First by choking him out, then by slamming his face into the clock tower after dropping him head first, and then once again by dropping him straight into a Christmas tree. How we see him walking a few hours later is beyond me. But Batman didn't break his rules, so on we go! And where we go is the final offer, Penguin's base of operations. It takes a little bit of ship exploring, but we eventually find this little flood of icy water with five bodies in it. And not so fun fact, these bodies actually disappear when you go back through here after beating Deathstroke. I don't know if it was a glitch or an intentional detail, but either way, it's kinda creepy. Then we get the best boss in the series. followed by a long trek through the ship with no bodies to add. Eventually, we come to the bar and find this guy passed out, but not dead, unlike this guy in the previous room that I almost completely missed. I only saw him because I looked at the passed out guy in detective mode. Yeah, for some reason, Origins lets you see some dead bodies through walls in detective mode if you're right by them. It's weird, but don't worry about it. Then it's on to the casino, where we still don't add any bodies, but we do take down Tracy, who was, in fact, not reaching for lip gloss. Then we take down the first of many enforcers, followed by some armed thugs in a... theater? I think it's a theater. It probably confirmed on the map, but I don't really care to look, so whatever. Anyway, after taking them all down, we find that Cobblepot has actually always liked his human body collections as we find six bodies in various display cases, very similar to his museum escapades in Arkham City. And that's it for the final offer. Penguin has a fish tank in his office with some skeletons in it, but as I've said before, bastard skellies don't count. I then have one of the best Deathstroke fights of my life. I literally only got hit a single time, and I still don't even know what caused it. Then came time to leave and meet Anarchy, but his side mission doesn't result in any deaths, so I can ignore it. I didn't know that during the playthrough, so I still ended up doing the mission, but just know that it doesn't matter for this sum. A side mission that does matter for this sum, though, is the homicide investigations. There are six in total, resulting in seven deaths. First, we have Brian Murphy, who was thrown from a rooftop. Next is Owen Grant, shot from below while taking photos of an illegal deal. Then comes Alex Kane, shot in a revenge plot by a parkour expert. Next is Nate Ramo, run over by one of his fellow SWAT members. Penultimate is Matthew Kadai, crushed by a ventilation unit thrown by a Venom Rager. And finally are Horace Riley and Clarissa Rodriguez, friends of Bruce shot in Crime Alley by a jealous ex. The last one in particular is significant because of Batman's reaction to finding the killer, Ian Chase. Batman almost kills him himself because he knew the victims. I'll probably cover this scene someday, it's really good. And while that is the end of this particular side mission, it's not the end of the crime scene investigations as we have one more inside Lacey Towers, which Penguin told us about before Deathstroke so rudely interrupted our conversation. Anyway, we have two victims here, but I'm not going to put them on the sum quite yet. 
They're obviously dead, but I'm going to wait until we get Batman's breakdown of the case to explain what happened. And to do that, we need to get access to the National Criminal Database inside the GCPD. Not much to talk about for a while, except me dying to the SWAT thinking I could be the same badass as this guy. I was wrong. And still, nothing happens as I make my way to the evidence locker for the Disruptor. Upon collecting it, a police riot breaks out thanks to Brandon. This leads to the deaths of four officers in the holding cells, though I'm a little iffy on two of them. One doesn't show up in detective mode for some reason, almost like they forgot to give him a skeleton model, and the other is a textureless corpse in this cell. Though that could be considered burning since he is behind a wall of fire, so I'll count it anyway, it doesn't matter. Then there's this guy the med team is reviving, who I will count on the sum. I set the precedent with Joker in Arkham City that if a character flatlines and is then resurrected, they go on the count. Detective Mode considers them deceased, and so will I. I'll also count this guy in the room behind them because he's obviously gone. But that's all for the GCPD, because we now have access to the National Criminal Database. Well, we would, but we need access to the fiber optic wires in the sewers. So into the cesspool and bad no-glide memories we go. But to my surprise, there aren't any bodies here at all. This let me breeze on through and eventually gain access to the National Criminal Database and solve the Lacey Towers case. Of all people, the Joker was the one behind the killings. He attacked Tiffany when she first got into the safe house. He shot the Black Mass decoy, Giovanni Lucis, as soon as he entered and eventually burned his body with a Molotov cocktail. He got into a tussle with Black Mask, who tried to get the jump on him from outside, but Roman lost. Joker didn't kill him because he wanted him alive for access to the Gotham Merchant's Bank. Before leaving with his bounty, though, he forced Sionis to shoot his own girlfriend hanging from the chandelier, then dragged him out of the room, screaming. An absolutely brutal case leading to two unnecessary deaths, and Batman heading to the Gotham Merchant's Bank to find this Joker. Exiting the sewers, though, and we are confronted with three thugs in rabbit masks singing a very strange song. And it will be a grand affair. Grand affair. Grand affair. And, and it, it will, will be, be a, a grand, grand affair hosted by the Hatter. After their Grammy-worthy performance, their heads are electrocuted, but not to death. They're just knocked unconscious, so on we go. We would go see what Mad Hatter is planning, but there aren't any corpses in this side mission, so I don't have to talk about it. Instead, I'll talk about the inside of the Gotham Merchants Bank, which is just... Why, Joker, why? There are 22 bodies currently in the bank. Three just by the entrance, two hanging up on pillars, three on the bridge, two in this office, three in the center display under the bridge, two outside the vault doors, one hanging in this stairwell, and six beside the vent we crawl through. I don't really know who these guys are except the clerk by the entrance, since he stays there for the rest of the game. I assume the rest are black mass defectors who wanted to stay loyal to their original boss, so Joker decided to kill them. I originally thought they were just bank employees, but I later realized that they were all in the same dark suits as the rest of the mobsters, so I think it's supposed to be implied that they're part of the crew. Regardless, Batman breaks into the vault and confronts Black Mask, but is surrounded by guns, so can't attack him. But big twist, it wasn't Black Mask at all! It was the Joker pretending to be Black Mask all this time. He's the one who hired the assassins, killed the commissioner, and is taking over Sionis' crew. And by god, this scene is disturbing. I know people give it a lot of credit nowadays, but it's a crime how much this was overlooked when the game first came out. I think everyone was too distracted by, ugh, Joker again, to realize just how great this moment is. Joker just casually beats the living daylights out of Black Mask and shoots Batman to the ground, while the bank manager is slowly growing more and more hysterical in the back. The music starts off calm and almost collected while the two are just meeting each other, but swells more and more as Batman comes to see what Joker is really like, until it eventually goes full swing as Joker blows the vault, killing the bank manager, even though the laughing gas was already gonna do her in. I can't tell what happened to these thugs that stayed in the vault with Batman for a little bit longer, they seemed to run after the ambulance, but that explosion was pretty big. Just by the time that the explosion took to go off, I'm gonna assume they made it out, so I'll only put the bank manager on the sum. After all that, I took a bit of a break to go meet Shiva, because her side quest actually results in a corpse for us to count. This guy hanging above the water is fine, but his partner wasn't so lucky. 
Apparently, this was Shiva trying to teach Batman the meaning of true justice, but he isn't buying it, so beats her up. Okay, seriously though, this fight is so bad compared to her initiation bout, and they're nearly identical. What went wrong here? Anyway, this leads us to the Cyanus Steel Mill, Joker's new hideout years before he acquired it again in Arkham City. And there is only a single body for us to count. This guy in the elevator who fell to Copperhead's poison. Not sure why she attacked this guy, but whatever, it's something for me to count here at least. But fun fact, this makes Penguin the villain with the most bodies in his hideout for the second game in a row. What's up with that, cobblers? Regardless of what it means, I have one more side quest to talk about, and that's Deadshot. It starts with, I presume, one police officer who goes down in the chopper crash. There could have been another, but Batman doesn't make that possibility clear, so I can only say the pilot. Then we find out that Deadshot shot down this chopper by ricocheting his bullet off a wall after also shooting a police sniper. Well done, Lawton. Great double kill. And that's all for that mission, except for the really dark fun fact that in the mere half hour I was out exploring the steel mill, all the bodies were cleared out of the bank. Implying either police and medical removed them all, or Deadshot's crew did. Either way, pretty dark. With that, we can head to the Gotham Royal Hotel, where Joker is hosting a meeting for all the assassins. Or at least the ones still in the job. But before we can find out who they are, we've got a body to count in the elevator. Now we can check the security cameras to see that there are only three assassins left. Bane, Firefly, and Electrocutioner. Deadshot and Shiva are also on the monitors, even though I just took them out, so minor plot inconsistency there, but who cares? Because another one is about to be out of the running, and I think you can guess who it is. Yeah, it's the guy who previously had a joke boss fight. Joker shoves him out the window of a 50 plus story building, leaving him to plummet into the lobby below. Amazing deaths for a less than stellar character. And apparently Batman has a looting 3 something because he just stole Buczynski's shock gloves without even taking them off his hands. Now I thought this was the first of many, many deaths throughout the hotel. I thought it was a bloodbath from previous playthroughs, but I was completely wrong. Before even finding any, we get a super dark line from this thug about Joker's orders. When do we get the And yet, very little follow-up on how many are currently dead. On the 19th floor, we find five workers in various scenarios, one of them strung up on a wheel that just keeps spinning. But we do save two workers from meeting their same fate. That's two hotel employees rescued for you, and... Oh my, I'm still way ahead in the employees killed column. You're only double, Joker, that's not way ahead. Step up your game and make my job harder. It's more entertaining that way. Speaking of, I found one body on the 25th floor, but then that's it. There's not a single body in Joker's carnival, which is honestly pretty disappointing. Joker says he's going to send the hotel guests through eventually, but you gotta have test subjects too, right? Also, I don't know if this should count, but I'm gonna include the supposed architect of the park since Joker says he's going to shoot him after Batman makes it through, and we hear the guy begging for his life and eventually yelling. So I think it's safe to assume Joker killed him. Come here, you little boss. Please don't. Ah! Right after exiting, we see two guys with TVs on their heads laying on a couch, and another guy hanging upside down from a chandelier. Inside the bar, we then see two guys strung up in Christmas lights with two of their friends safe. Before we find any more bodies, you found my snowman bombs. And then we blow them all up. They are technically close to guest rooms, but we don't know if they're occupied, let alone if the explosion even affected them, so I can't put anyone on the sum. But in blowing them up, we're able to latch onto Vicky Vale's helicopter, and she brings us higher up the tower. We get a great fight from the perspective of the news camera before her Chopper gets shot at, forcing them to retreat. Nobody dies though, so nobody to add to the list. Who we can add are the 12 Joker goons gunned down in the hallway by Bane's gang. And they are not all, as there are another eight inside the penthouse swimming pool, with three more on a column nearby. And that's surprisingly it for the Gotham Royal. We ended up with 25 crooks compared to a measly 12 hotel workers. So I guess Bane was even farther ahead in employees killed, at least in regards to Joker's crew. After that, it's just a quick fight with Bane, and oh yeah, the cops show up and shoot at people. We don't really get a confirmed number for anything, so I'm gonna have to guesstimate. I assume all these guys shooting at the choppers were gunned down, and since we see five of them in this overhead shot, I'll put all five of them on the sum. 
Bane's gang then comes in and shoots down two choppers with RPGs. Again, we don't know how many people are in the choppers, but I'll be generous to my numbers and assume there's a pilot and a gunner for each, meaning four in total. Maybe pilots are their own gunners? I don't know helicopters, but I want to inflate my numbers, sue me. Bane then uses a rocket of his own and blows Joker off the building to the ground below. Batman very stupidly decides to then save him. This leads to the death of two more of Joker's goons at his own hands. So that finally wraps up the Gotham Royal section of this video. Finally, we can move on with the story after seeing both Joker's and Batman's tragic backstories. No, I'm not including any of these guys' Joker fights, nor the Waynes on the sum. I don't care. Our next objective is finding Bane. The tracker Batman planted hasn't activated yet, so we follow up on a lead in the GCPD morgue in the meantime. Bane is supposedly dead on the slab, but we'll have to confirm that for ourselves before we can rest tonight. So we break into the sewers and find this guy we beat up during the earlier prison riot. Turns out, taking drugs is bad. He suffered from an overdose of TN1 as he was the one of the early test subjects for Bane, so onto the list he goes. And then we have a long string of gameplay with nothing to add. Bane's hideout has nothing for us, nor does literally any of Firefly's arc. Yeah, you can disarm every single bomb without a single body in sight. At least until we go to finally fight Firefly, where the helicopter that's been reporting on Firefly's actions is shot down and explodes into the central pillar of the bridge. Again, we can't confirm how many people were actually in the chopper, but another chopper does report to Gordon, no survivors, uh, plural. That at least implies there were multiple people on the chopper, so I'll add two to the sum. But that's surprisingly it. Remember when Firefly said he'd kill hostages if the police tried anything stupid? And if the cops try anything stupid, kill a few hostages. Guess he didn't want to follow up on that threat. So Batman can finally return to Alfred, who's been in danger of Bane this whole time after he discovered Batman's identity. But that's nothing to worry about. It's only been, what, an hour since he found out? How much could he have done? Oh. Yeah, Bane straight up kills Alfred, leaving just enough life in him to say goodbyes. That's really dark. Just like the fact that I'm going to count this as a sleigh, which I said I'd do back in the city video. I set the precedent, so I'm going to follow through with it. Don't add me to the weight you carry. We get one of the best goddamn speeches in the series, and Batman is ready to face Blackgate and the Joker one more time. Surprisingly, there's only a single body outside the prison, hanging at the front gate. But believe you me, this is nowhere near the end. As we head into the sewers, we don't find anything for a while, but eventually come across three inmates next to this junction box. I don't really know what happened to them, but I'll assume they electrocuted themselves while trying to rewire this box. Then another long string of nothing, followed by five guards strung up in various positions in this room. Then we get another mini-riot with two bodies, and a third somehow not dead. That's a weird thing with this revisit to Blackgate. Many bodies that are in such clearly dead positions aren't labeled as deceased. But I won't disagree with the game here. I might think they're dead, but people have survived way worse and died to much less in this series, so all logic is just thrown out the window. Anyway, there's one more goon next to Deathstroke's cell, and two more in this combat arena. Then we get to the big mess that is the Panopticon access route. There are a ton of bodies in here, but many of them are just listed as calm. I don't know why they did that, I guess to just make my job harder, but whatever. There's 10 bodies in this hallway, but only 4 of them are considered deceased. All the rest are, really strangely, calm. Not even unconscious, or nervous for that matter, calm. Despite hanging upside down and with barbed wire wrapped around their wrists, they're calm in this situation. I have a feeling this was an oversight to give the corpses movement that they hadn't accounted for, and these guys are supposed to be dead, but what do I know? We're just about done here, and I am getting really tired of counting, so let's just go fight Bane and be done with it. Well, we would be done with it, except that there are bodies in the arena! And unlike before, where I could have just counted them and moved on, since I now know that some bodies in this area could be unconscious, I have to scan them all. All while avoiding deaths at the hands of a raging bull on super steroids. 
After dying a painful death, I found that simply stunning Bane and not punching him would leave him stunned for quite a while. So I could use that time to examine the bodies and found that there are only two bodies here that are considered deceased. All the rest either wouldn't show me their status or were unconscious. And the ones I couldn't scan were moving, so I assumed they would be the same as the ones I the access route earlier. There's also these two guys that Gordon shoots when rescuing Joseph, but Joseph then handcuffs them, so I'm pretty sure they survive. But with that, we can go right ahead and kill Bane! Once again, same rules as Alfred. I don't care what Batman says, a flatline is a death to me. Unfortunately, reviving him may not have been the best idea, as Bane then takes a dose of TN1 and tries to kill Batman back. Thankfully, Batman can take him down and add no more bodies to the list. But that's still not quite the end. We still have to apprehend Joker. And before we can do that, we have to add five more guards in various cells. Then we beat up some thugs with Gordon, but seriously, why is this fight here when it's the easiest one in literally all of Blackgate? Anyway, it does give us three more bodies on the lower level to add, and one final corpse next to the chapel. And this one just so happens to disappear when you go into detective mode for some reason, so that is a pretty funny way to end this sum. Batman can beat the living daylights out of Joker, Gordon can get his first taste of Batman's disappearing act, and Bruce and Alfred can finally enjoy that Christmas ham. 190 people were slain in Batman Arkham Origins, just edging out Arkham Asylum for second place, but I don't think anything will be passing City anytime soon. Stupid Protocol 10. We had a seemingly impossible breakdown of 95 guards to 95 goons. Just... How did that even happen? With numbers this big, a perfectly even distribution should have been impossible. But somehow Arkham Origins did it. Just... Wow. I'll give the Platinum Batarang for Coolest Slay to the guys dumb enough to think they could take on Bane. Bane is absolutely brutal in this cutscene, showing just how big of a threat he is in this game. Instantly taking one guy out with a single slam and then snapping two guys next at once with only one hand is just amazing. Great introduction for a great villain. Why would he be taking money as a hired killer? Bad joke for Lamus Slay goes to, I guess, the guys I claim Deathstroke killed in his intro, just because I don't really know if I should add them to begin with. Truth be told, none of these slays were outright bad, since I opted to not include any background bodies in the first Asylum video. And Deathstroke was still a total badass while he did this, so I can't knock it too hard. Failed, you say? And that's all she wrote, chaps. Thank you so much for watching. Expect the technical, but also not really, finale of this miniseries with Arkham Knight around Halloween. I've got lots of other stuff planned for the summer, so I hope I can get to it before being dragged back to school again. In any case, do all the YouTube stuff because I want to prove to my parents that this is a sustainable job. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later, chaps.